Namzi is back as a carry in set 7.5, and today I'll show you the new way to use her as a carry by going over the mage builds, what items and augers it take, how to play before level 7, during level 7, then how to play after level 7, what you do if you get contested, and then we go into some in-depth positioning examples. This is a slow roll comp, meaning we're rolling now to 50 gold every single turn for 3 star units. We have a decent amount of flexibility in this comp, as we can change up our board based on what we hit and what augments we have. Here are the 4 core units for the level 7 comp. Namsi is our carry, and counts as 2 slots as she is a dragon. Silas and Lilia are in there to be tanks and mages. Lux can be replaced by anything, but you want to have at least 5 mages in, and she is generally the best as she can snipe backliners in some cases. The other 2 units you add in depends on your augments and what you hit. But a standard level 7 version is this, where you add in 2 more mages to get even more damage into our Namsi. Another version is to add in more frontline with Hecarim, and then add in Zyra for Whispers. You will slow roll until you hit Namsi 3 star, and then what you do depends a little on your situation. Sometimes you keep slow rolling for other units, and sometimes you push to level 8 and 9. I'll talk more about how we can change our level 7 boards based on our augments, as well as what we add in at level 8 and 9 later in the video. Namsi is our main carry, so we prioritize making items for her first. She has one core item, and that is Spear of Sojin. Namsi has 90 mana, so without Sojin, we need 9 autos in total to cast, and with Sojin, we only need 6. Additionally, we also get some extra AP through this item. The second item wants to be a damage item. This wants to be Archangels, Deathcap, Morello, Giant Slayer, or JG. Archangels and Deathcap are by far the best ones out of the ones mentioned here, but the others will also do the job. The third item wants to be a healing or another damage item. This wants to be Gunblade, Hodge, or another one of the damage items mentioned as the second item. The majority of the time you want a healing item though. This is because Namsi only has 3 range, and therefore will occasionally walk up to the frontline. Additionally, there is a lot of backline access in this set, so we get to heal through that with healing items. The reason why BT is not mentioned as a healing item here is because Gunblade also heals our tanks, which is huge for keeping our frontline alive. Hodge also gives a lot of damage, and gives enough healing for her to sustain, whereas BT gives too much healing on just Namsi and no damage whatsoever. Here are some examples of item builds for Namsi, where the better ones are on the left side. If you are a newer player, and you are not great at scouting or positioning, then I would always make sure you have a healing item on Namsi. After you've made Namsi items, you want to make tank items for Silas. He wants standard tank and utility items like Stoneplate, Sunfire, Warmogs, Protector's Wow, Dragon's Claw, Bramble Vest, Spark, and Redemption. If you have any more item slots, make Aura items like Banshees, Zeeks, and Chalice to further buff up Namsi. If you get a spatula, you want to build Mage Spad. This allows you to more easily fit in 7 mages, and it also provides a ton of value on certain units. This wants to go on Zyra or Hecarim if you're playing those in your comp. You can also make Cavalier Spat and put that on Silas or another tank, but Mage Spad is generally a lot higher value, as it turns Zyra into a god. The best augments to take for this comp are Axum Arc, Celestial Blessing, Cybernetic Uplink, First Aid Kit, Luden's Echo, Mage Heart or Emblem, Triforce, Weak Spot to apply Anti-Heal, Dragon Imperialist, Essence Theft, Jeweled Lotus, Metabolic Accelerator, Pandora's Bench, Portable Forge, Sunfire Board, Trade Sector, Earth's Grab Bag, and Golden Ticket. I mentioned a lot of augments there, and the best ones out of those are Axiom Arc, Mage Heart or Emblem, Dragon Imperialist, Essence Theft, Jeweled Lotus, and Trade Sector. If all that info was a lot to take in, then check out the cheat sheet for this comp. It's available for patrons and YouTube members. Here is the quirky cheat sheet from last set, so you know what to expect for the Mage Namsi cheat sheet that is available right now. The carousel priority for this comp is Rod, Sword, Tear, and Belt. From there, we can find a lot of the units for the comp in the early game. The best opener for this comp is 3 Astral with 3 Mages, where you use either Talia or Lux as your item carrier. Some other openers that also work are Ezreal with Swift Shots or Karma Carry. Since Namsi is a 3 cost unit, you want to pre-level to 4 on 1-4 if you don't have a strong early game board already, because if you hit an early Namsi, you're good to go for the rest of the early game. In the early game, we can also make items. You always slam Sojin and Gunblade, and you can also slam damage items like Deathcap and Archangels. You want to avoid slamming the less favorable items on Namsi in the early game, and instead just focus on getting the best items for her instead if you can't make the good ones. The goal with this comp is to be level 7 with 50 gold or more on stage 4-1. Therefore, we can play the early and mid game as if we were playing a standard fast 8 comp. In other words, the way we play the early game depends entirely on what opener we hit. From there, we can play for a loss streak or a win streak. And if you want to learn more about how to play the early game, check out my guide where I go in depth on that subject. After the Krugs round, you should have more direction towards a comp. The general requirements to play Namsi is to have one component for Sojin and one component for a healing item. You also want to have a mage board currently, 
as it makes the transition into the Mage Namsi board a lot easier when you hit her. Much like the early game, we can play the mid game aggressive or passive. If you are win streaking from Krux, you can level to 6 on 3-2 and even level to 7 on 3-5. You can also roll at both of these stages to maintain the streak. But note that the goal is to be level 7 with 50 gold or more on stage 4-1, so don't dig too deep. If you are lost streaking, your strategy depends a little on how much HP and gold you have. One option is to lost streak in the early and mid game until stage 3-5 and then level to 7 and roll for the level 7 board of the comp there. If that's too expensive, then just focus on saving HP until stage 4-1. Once you're level 7 on stage 3-5 or 4-1, we ideally want to get back up to 50 gold and start slow rolling. But first, we have to do a checkup on our HP. If we are low, typically 60 to 50 or lower, then we need to roll down to stabilize. The goal is to hit this board with Namsi 2 star, but sometimes you can get away with being weaker depending on how strong the other players are. Once you're above 50 gold at level 7, we start slow rolling. Your 3 star priority is Namsi and Silas. None of the other units are worth 3 starring, and a lot of the time you don't even need Silas 3 star to win games. Namsi 3 star is more than enough in a lot of cases. You will slow roll until you hit Namsi 3 star, and once you do, go to level 8. Sell the rest of the Silases you have on the bench to hit level 8 faster, unless you only need 2 or 1 more of Silas to get him 3 star, because in that case we can most likely just hit the 3 star at level 8. When you hit level 8, you have a couple of different options. The 8th unit you play here depends a lot on what your augments are, and what the level 7 board was. If you ran 7 mage, Hecarim is a great unit to add in for extra CC, and tankiness to the team. If you ran 5 mage, you want to add in Bard or Soraka for extra utility. If you have plus 1 mage, you always want to go for 7 mages by dropping Lux. And if you have the option to play 9 mages, you definitely want to do that as well, as you have an insane amount of damage coming out of Namsi at that point. Besides that, there is not too much else we can do here, just pay attention to see if you need more damage or frontline before choosing which variation to go for. If you get to level 9, you always play 7 mages, and then you add in a legendary unit like Bard or Soraka. You will almost never get partially contested with this comp, meaning if you get contested at all, it's usually always full contested. So when that happens, you have two options. The first one is to play this comp normally, but instead push for a fast 8 instead. This comp can still squeeze out top 4s, so it's not the end of the world if we get contested. Just make sure to play 7 mages at level 8 so you have enough damage to win rounds with 2 star Namsi. From there you can still try to hit 3 star Namsi, as you will hit after the contester dies. The second option is to slow roll at level 7, but know that you will be in a much weaker spot if you do this. To do this, you need to be farther ahead than your contester, and you also need to constantly be checking how close the other player is to hitting Namsi 3 star. If they're starting to get close, you have to roll down in order to hit before them. To understand the positioning of this comp, we need to understand Namsi's spell. She targets a random enemy and deals a ton of splash damage. Because of this, we can't control where Namsi will ult, but we can try to make the other team clump up so that Namsi hits more people with her spell. With that said, let's move on to general positioning with this comp, which looks like this. Here Zoe is in one of the corners to boost the attack speed of as many allies as possible. Namsi is next to her to stay safe, Heimer is next to Namsi to protect her on the other side, Lux is in the other corner to get the best ultimate angle possible, position Hecarim where he can get the best ultimate angle in the frontline. Now let's move on to some in-depth positioning examples. Against the first guy, the big threat is Zaya. We are making sure that the enemy Hecarim ults away from our Namsi. We are also clumping more towards the left side to make sure that the enemy Shivana doesn't land on Namsi. This way, we are making the enemy team clump up, which means that Namsi will deal more damage and Silas will be able to mana reave more targets with a spell. Zoe is positioned on the opposite side of Zaya to get the best ultimate angles. Against the second guy, the big threat is Aoshin. Hecarim is stunning the backline. We have to split up our backline to make Shivana land in the middle and not on our Namsi. This way she will also be close to the enemy Terra and Rakan once the heat walks up, resulting in Namsi dealing more damage with her spell if she ults the middle. Against the third guy, the big threat is Zyra and Siphon. Hecarim is positioned to ult the entire enemy team. Lux is on the second row to bait out the Siphon ult to make him land away from our backline. We're also clumping more in the front to bait out the enemy bard spell. Namsi is on the third row to make sure she doesn't get stunned by Zyra. Thank you so much for watching, if you learned something please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want cheat sheets for any of my comp guides, they are available for YouTube members and patrons, and links to those are down in the description. And if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord, we got over 9000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care, and see you in the next video.